This was a home-built aircraft and I thought I would digitize the diagram for the instrument panel. I've started up the Jumbo software and the first thing it asks us for the two reference points. The reference point on the left of the diagram and on the right where those green arrows are. In this case the diagram is not that big so we're not going to be drawing over the joint of the two boards. We're only going to be drawing on the board on the left hand side. But it still requires those reference points to carry on with the digitizing. The diagram is easy to follow. I selected the arc selection for this spot here. And I always check the jumbo software screen just to make sure the diagram's coming along OK. And if it's not, I just stop, cancel, and, and redraw. In this case, where the diagram was complicated with all those instrument holes, I saved my work frequently. I kept creating a DXF file 1, DXF file 2, so I could go back to it, edit out the portion that I didn't like. Now we're going to be digitizing the instrument holes. and This is where you touch it three times and the computer echoes back the reading. This allows you to check the print for the radius value and correct it. This gives the accuracy as the print had the radius values printed on the sheet. So I was able to override and correct each one that was slightly out. It ends up being slightly out because the way you hold your pen, you might hold your pen just a hair off to one side. And when you're looking for an exact reading, it could be out just a hair. I find this feature amazing because I've done holes eighth inch diameter and corrected them. So I carried on, I digitized each instrument hole, and I also digitized each bolt hole. But I used unconnected tracing to do the bolt holes by drawing a small X. The program right now doesn't have the facility or the method to make just a dot. So I drew a small X, and then I edited that out, and I put in an eighth inch diameter hole for the bolts. It took a while to do this because there's a lot of instrument holes and then there's four bolt holes for every instrument hole. So it took a while because you have to do each one separate. You have to save it. You have to carry on to the next one. But you're after the accuracy because after this is all done you want to take this DXF file and you want to cut it and you want those instruments to fit perfectly. Drawing each bolt hole using that unconnected tracing, making a small X, took a lot of time because there's a lot of them. And I had to take my time and save each one and then start, stop, start, stop. So it takes a while, but it pays off in the end because when I had to edit this out, the X's were just fine. I was able to put a small diameter eighth inch circle on each X. So we're getting close to being completed here, so when I'm finished, I will save this final file by creating that DXF file. And like I said, I made quite a few of them, just to make sure that if I had to go back and redo anything, I could just back up and edit that portion out. So now I'm going to take that DXF file that I created, the final one, and I'm going to load it into Vetric Aspire 9.0. This is where I might do a bit of editing, a bit of cleanup, but what I did do here, that's where I made all the bolt holes for the instruments. I took the X's out and replaced it with a 0.125 diameter bolt hole. This is the simulator part of the program, and I like that because I can take a look at my part and make sure that it looks good and it looks like the original. You can there see the bolt holes that I created. I did not create a toolpath because this program does not create a toolpath for a CO2 laser. So I just saved all my work as DXF. 
The program on the laser is what creates the toolpath for the laser. This is just a perimeter check to make sure that my workpiece is the proper size. I set up the laser at about 72% power, about 0.45% speed. And I found that it cut the parts perfect. The parts just fell right out when I picked the whole thing up. It took about 8 minutes to complete the cut. That's a good shot of the bolt holes. This is the final perimeter cut. Once this is done, we're finished. These are photos of the finished product.